So once again, I'm happy to say, my friend, Dr. Bethful is here. He's saying hello, Hare hello. Krishna. Hello, Krishna. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so before we read from Bhagavad Gita, I'd like to sing a nice song. <clears throat> Manasa Deho Geho, really beautiful song. So we can try to pray to our spiritual masters. Manasade ho geho, yokechumor. Apilum tua pade, nanda kishor. Sampade ve pade, jiva ne marane. like to read the English of that. Mm. <coughs> hey, hey, Gurudev. 
So this is a beautiful song by one of our great spiritual masters, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And his, the song is like this. My mind, my body, my home, or whatever I have in my possession, I surrender unto your lotus feet, O my dear Lord, Son of Nanda Maharaj. In good fortune or bad fortune, in life or death, there is no other duty than taking shelter of your lotus feet. Now, if you like, you can kill me, or if you like, you can give me protection. Whatever you like, you can do. I am your eternal servitor. You have every right to deal with me in any way you please. If I must be reborn, let that birth by your desire be in the home of a devotee. Let that birth be mine. Even a worm's life, I'll live as your servant. But a non-devotee, Brahma's lifetime, I'll never accept. If one has no aspiration for enjoyment or liberation, I simply hanker for his association. Fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, all there may be, master, preceptor, husband, you are all in all to me. Silvaktivinod says, O oh Krishna, do hear, Lord of Srimati Radharani, you are my life dear. Hey Krishna. <clears throat> so I'd like to say some prayers to our gurus. Again, at Mananda Shaganjana Shilakaya Chokshur Militam Yunatasmi Shri Gurvin Maha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, who with the torchlight of knowledge has opened my eyes, which are blinded by the darkness of ignorance. Namaste, Shilabhakti Bhaktivide, Godvanya Shimate, Prema Bhakti, Rizambade, Piram Jai Prabhuvin Maha. Nam Vishnu Pra Krishna Prashtaya Buddha Shimati Bhaktivedan Dusham in it. Namaste Sarasari Devi Gauravani Pichani in the Vishi Shashinivari Kastata Dishtani. Nam Vishnu Pra Radhika Priyatna Shashimad Bhaktivedan Dinivari in it. Shilashita Devi Go Shami Maharaj Ki Jay Shilabhaktivedan Dusarasari Thakur Ki Jay. So I'm reading from the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. The glorious perfection of the Supreme Person. <clears throat> the master of all mystic beauty, Lord Krishna, then said, Please hear from me carefully as I describe to you again the glories of the Supreme Divine Person. I speak out of a deep affection for you and a great concern for your welfare. The source of my existence cannot be fathomed even by the most powerful of beings or the most exalted of wise men, because I am, in fact, the fountainhead from which all such persons spring. Those who understand me to be the birthless primordial sovereign of the cosmos are beyond illusion, and their hearts are washed clean of all that misunderstanding which causes blameful actions and leads to death. <clears throat> all of the various qualities of consciousness which the souls who reside in this world display have their source in me. These include the intellect with its power to investigate and perform self-analysis, as well as the faculty of discrimination through which matter and spirit may be differentiated the ethical capacity which allows one to forgive the transgressions of others and to distinguish between truth and falsity comes from me, as does the power to restrain the senses from the pursuit of their objects, to focus in a perception and to contemplate upon supreme truth. From me comes sensitivity to pleasure and pain and the instincts which guide one through the processes of being born and of dying. Feelings of fear and anxiety as well as their relief sentiments of compassion for others, the sense of self-contentment, the capacity for doing penance and practicing altruism, and the awareness of good and evil repute, all of these have their origin in me. The great ancestors of the people of this world, the sages and the progenitors, were all born from the power of my mind. Gaining an understanding of the truths concerning my divine opulences and supernatural potencies, will lead one to become perfectly established in loving communion with me through selfless divine service. There is certainly no doubt of this. I am the unitary source from whom all of the power in the universe is generated and all creation emanates from me. 
the truly wise understand this and become devoted to me in love. The consciousness of saintly persons is always absorbed in ecstatic love for me and all of their life energy is dedicated to my service. When in the company of like-minded souls they take great relish in discussing theistic topics and to humanity at large they make an effort to spread divine love. In this way they live a life of the greatest pleasure and satisfaction. And to all those who are perpetually engaged in the ecstasy of offering loving service to me, I bestow the enlightened understanding that will bring them to perfect intimacy with me. Desiring to show my blessings upon them and to eradicate all misunderstanding, I, from my position within, illuminate their heart of hearts with the radiant torchlight of transcendental awareness. Arjuna then responded as follows, O my Lord, you are the supreme divine person, the ultimate place of pilgrimage and shelter, totally pure and perfect. You are the original personality of transcendence, the primeval Lord of all creation, without birth and without limits. All who are great in wisdom, sages like the divine Narad, Asita, Devil, and the learned Vyas, have given testimony of this, and now you are confirming it with your own witness. O Krishna, O Keshava, I believe that all your words are absolute truth. The revelation of your position as the all-attractive Supreme Person, the reservoir of all opulences, is understood by neither the pious nor the powerful. In fact, you are incomprehensible to all but yourself, for you alone are equipped with sufficient potency to understand your own glories. You are indeed the source of all that be, sovereign emperor of the galaxies, lord of lords and master of the entire cosmic creation. I would like to hear from you a more specific and complete description of the opulent and perfect transcendental potencies by which you permeate all existence with your presence. O supreme goal of all the saintly mystics, please tell me how I may keep my consciousness always absorbed in you and in what way I should contemplate upon your all-attractive divine forms. Please go on describing the amazing extent of your mystic power and beauty. For my ears are never satiated by the flow of nectar from your lips, O shelter of all the people. The Blessed Lord then said, I shall certainly be pleased to speak further about my divine nature, but in doing so I shall have to point out only the principle amongst my personal opulences, which in fact are infinite in their scope, O great chief of the Kuru dynasty. I am the very soul of everything, and am situated within the hearts of all. I am the origin, the support, and the destination of every sentient being, my dear Arjuna. Amongst godly figures, I am Vishnu, the all-pervasive one. Of luminous things, I am the radiant and life-giving sun. I am Marichi, amongst the gods of outer space, and of all the stars, I am the soothing moon. Amongst the holy scriptures, I am the hymns of the summer Veda, and amongst the celestial overlords, I am Indra, the king of paradise. Of all the sensory faculties, I am the mind, and I am the force of conscious life within the living. Amongst the powers of destruction, I am Shankar, the great Lord Shiva, and of the powerful subtle beings, I am Kuvera, the chief treasurer of the gods. Within the family of the Vasus, I am the deity of the fire, and of mighty mountains, I am Mount Meru at the universal center. You should understand, my dear child of Pitta, that of high priests, I am the most eminent Prihaspati. Of warlords, I am Generalissima Kartikeya, the son of Lord Shiva, and of seas, I am the mighty ocean. Amongst great seers of the truth, I am the sage Brigu. Amongst all words and sounds, I am the imperishable syllable Om. Of all forms of divine sacrifice, I am the recitation of the holy names of God. And of stationary objects, I am the range of Himalayas. Amongst great trees, I am the sacred fig tree. Of godly sages, I am Narada Muni. Of those with clear voices who sing for the pleasure of the gods, I am Chitarata. And of all perfected souls, I am the wise Kapila. Of horses, I am a Chayashriva, who is produced along with the elixir of immortality when the gods and demons churn the ocean. Of mighty elephants, I am Arava, who is also produced from nectar. And in human society, I am that monarch who gives light to the people. Amongst weapons, I'm the Vajra, the cosmic thunderbolt, and of cows, I'm Kamadenu, that miraculous bovine whose udders yield the fruits of all desires. Of those who beget children, I am Cupid, the god of sexual love, 
and amongst the snake community and the pious Vasuki. Of cosmic serpents, I am Ananta, possessed of limitless heads, and of all those who live beneath the water, I am the resident monarch Varuna. Amongst the forefathers of humankind, I am Aryama, who presides over the planets of the ancestors, and of all those who regulate the affairs of the world, I am Yama, who oversees death and transmigration. Within the midst of the family of demons descending from Diti, I am the saintly Prahlad, and amongst all conquerors I am time, which conquers all. Amongst the beasts of the jungle I am the lordly lion, and of all the many different birds I am Garuda, who carries Narayan and Lakshmi upon his back. Of all their purifiers I am the wind, and amongst those who are expert in the use of weaponry I am the great king Ram. Amongst the aquatics I am the shark, and of streams of flowing water I am the beautiful Janavi, the sacred Ganges. I am the beginning, middle and end of all creation, my dear Arjuna. Amongst forms of education, I am that science which leads to perfect knowledge of the self. And in argument, I am the natural and logical conclusion. In the alphabet, I am the first letter A. And of different types of words, I am the dual compound. I am the eternal feature of time and the lord of creative potency, whose many faces point in all directions. I am death which consumes all, and I am the source of all that which has not yet come to be. Amongst women, I am the presiding goddesses of the perfect feminine qualities, good reputation, beauty and opulence, sharp memory, deep intelligence, steadfastness in service, and patient forgiveness. Of hymns, I am the beautiful Briety melody of the hymns sung to the Lord at midnight. And of all poetic verses, I am the transcendental rhythm of the Gayatri invocation. Of months, I am the months of harvest, and of seasons, I am the fragrant days of spring. Amongst frauds, I am the cheating gambler, and of all that which is radiant, I am the radiance. I am the sense of victory in all winners, the spirit of adventure in the brave, and the goodness of all those who are good and true. Within the Rishni dynasty, I am the son of Vasudev, and within the family of Pandu, I am Arjuna. Of all the learned philosophers, I am Vyas the compiler of the Vedas, and of deep thinkers, I am Shukra, the professor of the unsurrendered souls. Amongst those who must keep order, I am the penalties which they impose upon the lawless, and all those who seek after success, I am those who keep to righteous means. Of those things which must be kept secret, I am the protecting vow of silence, and I am the wisdom possessed by the wise. My dear Arjuna, I am the seed from which all living things grow up, and nothing animate or inanimate could exist if I did not exist. Infinite indeed are my opulences and potencies, O hero amongst men, and the examples that I have given you are by no means complete. You should understand that all that is substantial, beautiful, and glorious within creation is born from a tiny fragment of my lustrous majesty. So what will you gain by knowing all these very things? It is enough to know. That indeed I am, and that with a single spark of my mystic nature, I uphold and pervade the entire cosmos. Mm. Govinda, Govinda. So, Krishna is giving examples of all the... everything that is super excellent, that is first class in the creation. And he is these things. He is mm, represented in these things as being that which is super excellent. Uh, but at the same time, Krishna is uh, achintya, inconceivable. Um, we don't have the capacity to actually conceive of all the opulences and potencies of Krishna. This is not possible. He is infinite and we are finite. Um, but as he says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktiamam Abhijanati, that, uh, that he is to be known, in fact he is to be conquered. Uh, although his name is Ajita, he cannot be conquered. But he is conquered by the love of his devotees. So, this is our one and only goal, Param Gitim, to the supreme destination, is to is to go to that place where 
Mm. Where the Krishna is the supreme beloved of everyone. This is Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual kingdom. Uh, and in that place, no one knows that Krishna is God. <laughs> they don't know that Krishna is God. He's just their friend, uh, or their beloved son, uh, or their beloved, as he is for the gopis. Um, so to come to that stage, because of course in this world, many people are atheists altogether. They have no uh, knowledge of God, no desire to know God. Uh, they don't believe, many of them, even that God exists. But even those who do have some understanding that, yes, there is the Supreme Lord, um, <clears throat> they have a, they worship Him mostly in awe and reverence. Uh, there's no sweet intimacy there. But this is not pleasing to Krishna. Actually, coming soon we have the uh, month of Damodar, in which we recite the Damodar Rashtakam, beautiful prayers. Uh, glorifying the Lord's childhood pastimes. And in that prayer it says that uh, Krishna is not uh, captured, he is not attracted by this mood of awe and reverence. Um, rather, he's attracted when the gopis uh, chastise him. Krishna is a, a debauchee, he's a, he's a liar. <laughs> He's a thief, all of these things. Of course, he's pure. Krishna's Pavitram, he doesn't commit any sin at any time. But the transcendental uh, relationship of the residents of Vrindavan and Krishna is such that they speak to him in a very familiar, intimate way. And Krishna loves that. He, this, this is very pleasing to him. And that's only possible because they have no conception that he is the Supreme Lord of creation. No, they don't ever at any time, even if Krishna performs miraculous activities, which he does uh, so much, lifting the Govardhan hill for seven days on his little finger and smiling and completely effortlessly performing these amazing miracles, opening his mouth to Mother Yashoda, uh, seeing the universe within his mouth, Still, she, Mother Yashoda, this is some mystic magic going on here. This boy, Krishna, he's, I must protect him. He's not God. I must protect him. So this is the mood of the residents of Raj, of Rindavan. So we can uh, at least understand that we need to come to that stage. As Srila Narayan said, we need to come to the stage where we actually forget that Krishna is God altogether. Uh, otherwise, we cannot come to that very intimate, uh, sweet relationship with Him, which is so pleasing to Him. Because that's the nature of Prem, or Divine Love, is that everything one does is for the pleasure of the Beloved. There's no selfish interest. Just like when Shimadhi Radhika chastises Krishna, she does that because it pleases him to be chastised. She has no personal motive. Uh, she is not trying to gratify her own senses or um, in any way derive happiness. <coughs> uh, her happiness is the happiness of Krishna. So <clears throat> these things are very, very high to understand. But uh, we should at least understand them theoretically and philosophically that we need to come to that stage where we forget that Krishna is God and rather we see him as a very intimate friend, protector, um, just like uh, <clears throat> there's a beautiful pastime. One time the Krishna is taking the, the cows and the <coughs> cowboy boys uh, out into the forest and uh, some or other the cars, they begin to wander away. They start moving, traveling deeper, deeper into the forest. And all of a sudden, in that forest, 
there's a big fire. A big fire starts. And the cowherd boys also, they go looking for the cows and all of a sudden they're all surrounded by this very big fire. Very, very dangerous fire. But because of their relationship with Krishna, they they're only the li their life and soul is Krishna. So automatically, in this great danger, what do they do? They call out to Krishna. They call out to Krishna. Um, but still, they don't think he's God. But they just think he's a very he's their friend, and he can do anything. <laughs> so they call out to Krishna, and Krishna comes, and he says, "Close your eyes." And then in a second, he swallows that whole fire. He swallows that whole fire. Uh, so there are many examples of how the residents of Vrindavan uh, spontaneously uh, call out to Krishna. Um, he is their life and soul. So, <clears throat> so we are here in this material world. Um, we are unfortunately not feeling yet these intimate, sweet feelings for Krishna. But uh, our main thing is our faith, is our faith, Shraddha. This is our main. This is our main thing. This is the thing that we that, that actually, you come to know the spiritual world through faith, through faith. So, uh, our business is how can I increase my faith? How can my faith become stronger and stronger? Um, this is a stage called uh, nishta, nishta, unflinching faith, no doubt, no doubt, complete faith. Um, how can I develop my faith? How can I become stronger? Just cultivate spiritual strength. So we are given the technique how we can do that. How can we become more faithful, more stronger like that in, in our beliefs and our, our conviction that actually Krishna is my intimate friend, my protector. And that is possible if we carry on with these practices on a regular basis, the chanting, the reading of the books, uh, the offering of food to Krishna, the kirtan in the temple, uh, so many nice instructions we've been given by the Guru to take us away uh, from the world of misunderstanding to the world of perfect understanding. And um, so we just need to stay steady steady on the path um, that will be possible only if we have a humble state of mind as Lord Chaitanya has given us in that nice verse Trinad Bhisani Chena Taroda Pisa Hishnana Amana Namana Dena Ketami Asada He wants to chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind thinking oneself lower than the store in the street wants to be more tolerant than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige and ready to offer all respects to others in such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Kirtana Sadari. Sada means constantly. And this is the example given by Lord Chaitanya. There's a nice song that Srila Prabhupada sings. Gai Gora Madhu Svare. Gai Gora Madhu Svare. That Lord Chaitanya is singing the holy names very sweetly. Hare Krishna. And it's our duty, as Prabhupada says, to follow in his footsteps, to chant the holy names. Um, and Prabhupada says that we need to chant the holy names in happiness and distress. Uh, this is necessary. Um, not that we stop when it's distressful. <laughs> distress will come in this world because there are three sources of distress, as we know. Adhyatmik, adhibotik, adhidaivik, the distress that comes from one's own body and mind, the distress that comes from other living entities, and the distress that comes from the forces of nature. So these things will come. There's no doubt they will come. But Lord Goranga's instruction is, you keep chanting. In happiness and distress, you keep chanting. And how will that be possible? Only in a humble state of mind. Uh, more humble than the blade of grass. So this is going to be our uh, companion. This humility is our constant companion. Um, 
And in this way we attract Krishna's mercy because nothing, as Srila Rainmaraj says, nothing attracts Krishna's mercy other than humility. humility. So we can pray for humility and um, in this way, one day at a time, one breath at a time, uh, we're, as Srila uh, Bhaktivedanta says in the, his commentary into the Brahma Samhita prayers, our march, we are marching to uh, the spiritual kingdom, to associate with Krishna. We are marching, day by day we are marching. Uh, so to do that, we need to always chant the holy names, as Lord Chaitanya says, Kirtanya Sadahari, and that will be possible only in this humble state of mind. So <clears throat> I'd like to also read a little bit from Srila Prabhupada. This is a, a, for, a conversation that took place in Los Angeles on May 14th, 1973. Devotee, Srila Prabhupada, if material nature is the absence of Krishna, then what is material? Hmm. Srila Prabhupada, nothing is material. If you continue Krishna consciousness, there's nothing material. When we offer this flower in Krishna consciousness, is it material? Devotee, no. Srila Prabhupada, so how has it become spiritual? It was material in the tree, and now it has become spiritual? No, it is spiritual. As long as I was thinking that it is meant for my enjoyment, it was material. As soon as I take it for Krishna's enjoyment, it is spiritual. Devotee, so actually this entire world is spiritual. Srila Prabhupada, yes. That we want, to engage everything in Krishna's service. Then this world will be the spiritual world, devotee. So we can also appreciate Krishna's creation in that light. For example, this flower is very beautiful because it is Krishna's. Srila Prabhupada, yes. We realize that. The Mayabad philosophy says, Jagan Mitya. This world is false. We don't say that. Krishna has created so many nice things for his enjoyment. Why shall I say Mitya? False. Suppose you build a nice house and you call me, just see, and if I say, it is all mitya, devotee, I'll be offended because I can't enjoy it if it is false. Shri Prabhupada laughing. How depressed you'll be. The Bhagavad Gita explains that the demons say like this, Asatyam apretishtan te jagat ahur anishwaram. The rascals, the demons say, that this world is asatya, untruth, and that there is no cause, no Ishvara. This is the declaration of the demons. But if Krishna is a fact, his creation is a fact. His energy is a fact. Why shall I say it is false? We don't say it is false. The Mayavadis say it is false. Devotee, if someone looks at the deity of Krishna and thinks it's only stone or wood, for him, it's still material, Srila Prabhupada. That is his ignorance. How can it be material? The stone is also Krishna's energy. For example, electricity is everywhere, and the electrician knows how to utilize it. Similarly, Krishna is everywhere, even in the stone, and the devotees know how to utilize stone to appreciate Krishna. The rascals do not know. The devotee knows because he has no other view then of Krishna. Why should the stone be without Krishna? Here is Krishna. That is real oneness. The Mayavadi philosophers propose oneness, but they divide. This is stone. This is not Krishna. Why bring another thing? Devotee. For a Krishna conscious person, is Krishna as much in the stone as in the deity? Srila Prabhupada, yes. Devotee, just as much? Srila Prabhupada, yes. Why not? Devotee, but we order deities all the way from India. Srila Prabhupada, Krishna explains, everything is in me, but I am not everything. This is called Achintya Beda Beda, simultaneous oneness and difference. Everything is Krishna, but you cannot worship this bench as Krishna. That is rascaldom. The sunshine is also sun, is it not? But when the sunshine is in the room, we cannot say, 
The sun is in my room. This is called a chinta beda beda. Devotee, but you said that one can see Krishna within the stone. Srila Prabhupada, yes, why not? Devotee, and one can worship him within the stone or within everything? Srila Prabhupada, yes, we worship everything. We see Krishna everywhere. We don't see the tree. We see Krishna's energy. And therefore, the tree is also worshipable because Krishna and Krishna's energy are both worshipable. Therefore, we say, Hare Krishna. Hare means Krishna's energy. We worship everything. In our childhood, we were taught by our parents that if a grain of rice falls on the floor, we must pick it up and touch it to our head to show respect. We were taught like this. How to see everything in relationship with Krishna, that is Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we do not like to see anything wasted, anything misused. Why are we preaching? Because we see that so many rascals are misusing their life. We think, let us give them some enlightenment. This is our mission. We could think, let them go to hell. Mayavari sannyasis engage in meditation or go to the Himalayas. But we have come to Los Angeles. Why? This is our mission. Oh, these people are being misused under Maya. Let them gain some enlightenment. We are teaching how to utilize everything for Krishna, how to understand Krishna in everything. That is our mission. See Krishna in everything. Krishna says, anyone who sees me everywhere and everything in me is perfect. Jai 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 Radhe. Thank you.